Hello, and welcome to Jask Draws. I am Jask, and I draw. I've got some more character art for you today in the form of what seems to be my most common artistic subject, the Calhorn family. For those who aren't familiar with the Calhorns yet, they're a family of elves I created for a Dungeons & Dragons game. There are six of them, and so far I have played two. Those two have a handful of videos of their own, and if you would like to learn about them separately, those links are in the description, or you can find them in a playlist linked at the end of this video. But to get back to these two, the two I'm drawing and coloring here today are Cordell Alastair and Vineth Kelhorn. For instance, their dad calls them Del, and their aunt calls them Allie. Their eldest cousin, Natoris, calls them by their full first name, Cordell Alistair, and Ericora, their other cousin, calls them Al. Lastly, their sister, who I will be talking about a bit later, calls them Alistair. Occasionally, Cordell Alistair will go home and visit, but it is usually only once a year. As I mentioned, they live quite a ways away from the rest of the family, and they don't always stay in one place, so it's not like the rest of the family can visit them. They do keep in contact, usually just with their dad, and other times they'll send home, like, bundles of herbs and tea blends and things like that that they've grown themselves, but that's about it. Personality-wise, Cordell Alistair is serious, mellow, logical, straightforward, but not in a condescending or rude or cold-shouldered way. They're pretty supportive of other people and has been known to offer help to strangers who stumble upon whatever temporary home they're in by complete accident. They try to think about things as unbiased as they can, that way they can understand a subject from as many angles as possible, and that allows them to be as supportive of others as they can possibly be. And of course, once someone is supported to their satisfaction and no longer needs help, they can leave Alistair alone. They like their solitude, but aren't rude enough to tell people to go away right off the bat. I think the only real exception to not telling people to go away immediately would be to their family members or close friends. Like, they'd absolutely tell their sister or their cousin to leave if they didn't have any patience for them, but they wouldn't necessarily say it to their dad or aunt. Both of them are far too nice. But you get into a sibling relationship and you will absolutely tell your sibling to leave if you don't want to deal with them. That's just how it is with siblings. Despite the seriousness, Cordell Alistair can be pretty sarcastic, and they do have a bit of a mischievous side. Sometimes they'll spectate people or happenings that are likely not going to go very smoothly, just so they can see someone act a little bit foolishly. They might even be the one who pushed for it to happen in the first place. Like, you know that whole trope where someone is about to try something that will absolutely end terribly? Someone goes to stop them, and then a third person says, No, 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 I want to see what happens. Cordell Alistair wants to see what happens. Moving on to the other Kelhorn in this drawing, we have Vineth. She's Alistair's older sister. 
She is a retired bounty hunter currently working at her dad's armory as a sword and armorsmith. She's been there for, I believe, 50 years or so. The majority of her adult years, she and her cousin, Arakora, were professional bounty hunters. Back when they first set out on their joint journey, they accidentally stumbled into the mercenary and sellsword industry pretty much right off the bat. Given that the two of them were raised and trained by an incredibly strong and skilled former adventurer, the tasks they took on as mercenaries at the start of their career were all well within their capabilities. The pay was great, they were good at it, and there was just the right amount of danger and challenge. They did this for a long time, a handful of decades. Vineth got her big ol' face scar during these years, as you might have guessed. She and Aracora were tracking a target, and after learning that person was innocent of the crimes against her, they tried to find her before any other bounty hunters could. They did find her, but failed to prevent her from being killed by another hunter. There was a rather one-sided fight, Aracora nearly bled to death and Vineth went down in the middle of it, sprang back up after that facial injury, and their target was slain in front of both of them. They just couldn't get there in time, Vineth was downed again after she tried to take on the killer. She nearly quit after that, but chose to stick around for a while longer and protect other people against similar false charges. Aracora took that idea of saving innocent people and bumped it up to 11 and started handing out second chances and freedom to nearly every single bounty they took, no matter whether or not the person was innocent or obviously guilty. His heart was in the right place, but his ideals were almost destructively forgiving. Vineth did not agree with everything he was doing and no longer agreed with his methods, and eventually separated herself from that life after about a century total of working as a bounty hunter. So she went home and asked her dad to mentor her in his trade, and he did. She's been at it for a while now, like I said, I think around 50 years, and she's much happier in a forge than she ever was as a mercenary. Vineth has a great energy to her. I don't know how to describe it other than being really friendly. She's very good at making friends with anyone she meets. She's natural in social situations. You feel comfortable around her. You know she's not putting on an act to try to make you feel any certain way. She's genuine, she's happy, she loves her work and takes pride in it, and she's invested in the interests of others. She's the kind of person who invites you to info dump about all your favorite things and asks questions and engages in it with you. She can be stubborn sometimes, if only because she's true to herself and what she knows she wants. Like I said a second ago, she does take a lot of pride in her work, and she can be pretty uptight about how her creations and weapons and armor are handled and cared for. She made most, if not all, of the weapons and metal-based gear that her family members use, Aracora's spears and his glaive, as well as Natoris's quarterstaff and his daggers. Her craftsmanship is very personalized and carefully executed, and she will absolutely scold people if they aren't taking care of their weaponry properly. In terms of design, Vineth was pretty easy to draw. I had a rough idea of her mostly in personality rather than in appearance, so I automatically drew, just drawing what I felt matched her considering what the other Kelhorns looked like and what her personality was, and before you know it, I had a wonderfully muscled lesbian blacksmith in no time. And as smiths shouldn't be wearing a whole lot of complicated outfits in their workplace, I didn't have to go out of my way to create an extravagant aesthetic. Some simple clothes and an apron, gloves, that would do just fine. 
Cordell Alistair, though, gave me a heap of trouble. The original summary was more akin to a hermit witch in the woods type of a thing, long brambly hair, a loose dress or a tunic over some cut off or rolled up pants, bare feet, dirty hands, dirt all over the edges of their clothes, bright eyes, that kind of thing. They'd tear open a bag of soil in a Home Depot and stick their hands in it without a second thought. They were a pretty eccentric character on paper. But when I went to draw them, none of that imagery was fitting anymore. It felt like it was a completely different character, and I tried a number of different approaches, but none of them were working in the slightest. I tried the thing I did with Vineth, automatic drawing, and after a few tries, I got something very similar to what you see now. They went from that hyperactive forest witch to basically a glorified gardener with magical shears, but that's absolutely fine. I love the way they turned out, and I feel like this look fits more of the casual Kelhorn style than the original idea did. Outside of that, for the time being, there's not a whole lot more to talk about. So I will sit back and turn the music up, so please enjoy this musical interlude for the rest of the speed paint. Now that we're nearing the end of this video, let's look at the full references for both of these beautiful Kelhorns. Truthfully, I've had this drawing shelved for quite a while, but I'm glad I finally got to finish it. With Cordell, Alistair, and Vineth drawn, there's only one more Kelhorn that I have not drawn yet. So maybe I'll do a drawing of the whole family one of these days and talk about them as a whole some more. Who knows? But, as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and attention. If there's anything you'd like to see me draw, please let me know. In the meantime, if you want to see more art of these characters and several other characters, you can follow me on Twitter at J underscore Pomerlin or on Tumblr at jaskdraws.tumblr.com. 
Links will be below if you don't feel like searching around. And once again, this has been Jask Draws. Subscribe for more references and rambles, and until next time, have a lovely day.